So we've seen that generating random numbers is really easy, and we started to see ways that we can apply that to drawing shapes on the screen. Um, but if we pair this idea of random number generation with another idea from last time, conditionals or if-else statements, we can start to also randomly control the flow and structure of our program, um, which adds all kinds of extra cool stuff. Um, for now, it means that we can choose between, like, for example, drawing a square or drawing a circle. Uh, but as you start to get into things like simulation or games, this becomes really great. You can have random behavior, random events happen, things like that. So in our sketch here, let's go ahead and think about a simple example first. And again, then we'll move down and make some drawings with it. And it's worth talking for a second uh, I can't type and talk at the same time, uh, talk about probability. So I'm definitely not a mathematician or statistician. I don't know much about probability. But essentially what we're doing here is um, setting the odds of something happen. So I have a coin here. And if we were to flip this coin, because it's got two sides, there's a 50% chance that I'm going to get heads and a 50% chance that I'm going to get tails. So if I flip it here, I get heads, flip it again. Now there's a 50-50 chance. Get heads again, et cetera, et cetera. So we can actually do the same thing in code here. Um, so I can um, create a value, let's say between 0 and 100. And um, this value is going to yeah, be within that range. And then I can use an if statement and say, if value is less than 50, uh, we can say console.log heads else console.log tails. And essentially what we're doing here is creating a coin flip. Um, it's between our numbers between 0 and 100 because that's easy to think about. We're used to percentages, 50%, that kind of thing. And so if the value is less than 50, there'll be a 50% chance of that happening. Um, it's going to print heads and 50% tails. So if I run this, heads, weirdly the same as when I flipped the coin, tails. And if we were to continue to run this over and over, um, if we ran it enough, we would see approximately 50% heads and 50% tails. We can um, use this same idea to make drawings with, which is really cool. So um, I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I'm going to add no loop like we talked about in the last video and go down to my draw. So this preset gray is not my favorite. So I'm going to go with a little darker here. And let's say we want to draw some random lines on the screen. Um, and we want to draw a bunch of them. This is a really good time to use a function where we're going to um, write kind of like a prototype or um, an uh, like archetypal version of this command that we can then use inside of a for loop. So I'm going to go down here and say function draw random line. Uh, in part, this is also because you know I want to do some random choices and stuff like this, and it's just going to get a little bit longer. So for my line, I need an x and a y position. And we'll do that between 0 and width, and a y between 0 and height. Uh, for now, we're going to make them all the same length. If you want to try changing this, that would be cool. And then um, we can do a stroke. 255. Let's make the stroke weight a little bigger so that we can see it. And now we want to um, have it either draw randomly 50% of the time, draw it horizontal, and 50% of the time, draw vertical. So I can do something similar to what we just did up here. I'm going to combine it all into one thing. So I'm going to say if random 100. Oh, so we didn't talk about this yet, but like fill, if we only specify one number, to random, then that's the maximum. It's always going to be between 0 and that number. So this is the same as random 0 to 100. It's less than 50. Then we want to draw horizontal. Else we're going to go vertical. And so if you want to pause for a second and try to write in to this if statement, that'd be cool. Uh, but we can use the x and y values that we just created for that. So I can say line x and y. And remember, we want to move side to side. So for now, we can just say um, you know, x plus a specific number. And then y stays the same, because it's horizontal. 
And then our vertical line would be x, y, x, y plus 12. And let's just try, oh, so uh, if we were to run this, we wouldn't see anything because we haven't actually called this draw random line command. If I go up to my loop here, or my uh, draw function here, I can make a loop. I equals zero, all right, let's, let's do 50 for now. And I can say draw random line. And you can see here again, we're combining the power of iteration conditionals and now random number generation to fill our screen with these cool random lines. And if I run it again, it's gonna be different every time. So this is pretty cool. Let's try changing it to 500, see what that looks like. Now totally different, pretty sweet. Um, I'm sure you're already thinking of interesting ways that we could improve or change this. Um, right now, our line is being drawn from our X point and our Y point, and either sort of like this, or like this. And maybe we want to center it on our X and Y. So we could do that by saying, you know, if it's 12 pixels long, we could do X minus six, X plus six, X, uh, Y minus six, Y plus six. And it's not going to change what we see on the screen, but it is going to change its behavior. Um, you could also think about using matrix transformations like push, pop, and translate here. Um, you could even do random rotation, and that would be something cool for you to try to add here. Um, and what else could we add? So I think we could also change the length to be random. So if instead of plus six, minus six, what if for each one, we make this random too? So we could do it between, I don't know, four pixels long and Let's go crazy, let's go 80. Now I could say, instead of X minus a specific amount, I can say X minus length divided by two, X plus length divided by two, and then the Y would be the same. And now we get randomly length lines, is that a sentence? Um, lines of random length on the screen. Um, and again, if we change the number of lines being drawn, this is really going to change the kind of look. Similarly, if we change color or stroke weight, you know, three pixel semi-transparent starts to look like fabric. Um, if I make the stroke weight really small, again, it's really changing that, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, one more thing that we're going to change, try changing here, and that's our probability. So, so far we've been kind of working like a coin. It's 50% chance of either horizontal or vertical, but there's no reason that has to be the case. I could make it 10% chance of being horizontal and 90% chance of being vertical. And we'll see here, even if I reduce that further, right? So now almost all of them are vertical and only a few are horizontal. We could change this the other way. So it's a 90% chance being vertical, or sorry, horizontal. And that really changes it. Of course, you could also make this a random percent, a random chance of being one or the other. And this is where this whole thing starts to like be really cool and, and tie into each other and stuff like that. Um, so random choices are, are really useful, really interesting. There are ways you can control the flow and the structure of your program. Um, you certainly wouldn't have to draw lines. You could change your shape here. So you could say uh, circle x, y, something like that, and start to really bring these things together in interesting ways. And I think what you're seeing happen right here is exactly how it works. You got to do a lot of experimentation, trying things out, changing values, see what happens. Um, and, oh, I almost forgot. We're going to add one more thing here, which would be pretty cool. So right now they're all the same color, but we can um, kind of control that. And in the last example, we saw color that was totally random RGB. And that looks okay, but like I said, it looks it looks like random RGB. Instead, um, we can define an array of colors, a list of colors, and have our program randomly pick. So I'm gonna call this variable colors. And you'll notice it's up at the top. This is a global variable accessible to our whole program. And arrays are noted with square brackets like this. And now there's a bunch of ways that we could think about putting color in an array. If you think about RGB color, it has the red, green, and the blue, three different numbers. If we had alpha, that would be four. Um, and there's like lots of ways that we could do this. There's more 
uh, computer science-y ways, I guess, but the super easy shortcut way is to write it out like this. So RGB, and just to write it out as a string. And if you've done any web design before, this probably looks familiar. This is how color in CSS is listed. And we make it a string and P5JS is smart enough to know what this is and will work with it for us. So I'm just gonna make some colors here. And the reason I like this is that we don't have to um, do any fancy stuff when we're going through our list. Um, it's easier to read. We don't have to try to remember which color is red, green, or blue, all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, so I'm just making some colors here. Cool. Um, the other nice thing about doing it this way is that we can easily change and add these colors later. Um, you know, it's not purely random. We have some choice, that kind of thing. So that's my colors array. Now, if I go back down to my draw random line function, instead of having stroke of white, and actually, you know what, maybe we wanna make our stroke weight a little thicker again so that we can see it. We can um, pick a color and we could do this, you know, programming, there's lots of ways to do the same thing. We could do this all as, you know, one big long line of code, but I like it a little more readable. So I'm gonna say, which color? Now we wanna pick a random element from the list. And if we did random from zero to colors.length, um, we would not get what we wanted. and if you think back to the last video, can you guess why? The reason is that, remember a random number generator, uh, our random function here sends back a floating point number. The floating point means decimal. And obviously we can't have element three and a half from a list, right? Like that doesn't exist. So we need some way of converting this from a floating point number uh, to a whole number or an integer, something with no decimal. And luckily, this is very easy. We just wrap this in this int function. And essentially this rounds it down and gives us a whole number that we can work with. And then we can say stroke colors. And remember from a couple weeks ago that um, arrays, we access the element from the array using its index, its position in the list. It starts with zero and it goes up to um, the length minus one. And so which color basically just gives us a random index. Now, if we run this, let's see, I'm gonna get rid of these uh, circles. I do like the circles, but let's get rid of those here and maybe draw fewer so we can see them again. Cool. So now we've got a, a bunch of lines that are random colors, but instead of being totally random RGB, uh, I ended up with this kind of like, um, I don't know, 80s roller rink carpet colors, which is maybe not, maybe not what we're after, but um, but it does let me pick colors from a specific palette of color, which I think is pretty great. So that's random choices. Um, and in the next video, we're going to build on this again to do some more cool stuff. So see you over there.